Marjan, uh, welcome to our AI seminar. Uh, Marjan uh, received her PhD at Amir Kabir University um, and then uh, worked as a postdoc uh, researcher uh, in uh, uh, Case Western Reserve University. Now she's back at Amir Kabir uh, doing postdoc research. And uh, today she's going to talk to us about uh, developing uh, new deep learning tool models for medical image analysis. Um, and uh, I will leave the floor to Marjan. Go ahead, Marjan. You can share your screen. Okay. Uh, thank you, guys. Uh, and uh, thank you for the invitation. And, and uh, I'm uh, Marjan Firuznio, and uh, I'm working uh, in electrical engineering department at America University as a postdoc post researcher. And uh, my um, main project uh, was about uh, medical image analysis based on the chaos and fractal. Uh, and uh, today uh, I want to talk about uh, some uh, new algorithms uh, based on the chaos and fractal and machine learning algorithm for medical image analysis. And uh, let's start with the definition of the chaos and fractal, and then uh, we focus on the, some uh, new algorithm in this area for computer vision tasks and medical image analysis. But the main question is that why uh, we need to use chaos and fractal for analysis. Uh, we uh, wanted to use chaos and fractal to uh, represent the rich information of the um, uh, dynamical uh, systems and and uh, and so uh, for these are uh, in this area uh, we have some main characteristic uh, like deterministic sensitivity ergodicity and uh, irregularity uh, as, as you can see in the in this figure uh, we have a um, random like uh, time series in the time domain uh, but uh, if we have a, a chaotic dynamics, uh, when we represent the, these um, time series into a state space or phase space, uh, we can uh, um, obtain a, a deterministic dynamics uh, that can be up, can be modeled and represent with a simple uh, maps. And this is obtained based on different methods. And we can embed the time series or image into the state space or fuzz space based on estimating a time delay, as you can see here, and also embedding dimension of the signal. And then um, based on the state space, we can analyze the uh, chaotic um, system. Uh, and, um, uh, and as you can see here, we can, uh, based on this map, uh, we can simply um, use uh, this map for modeling, for synthesis, or for prediction, estimation, or something like that. And this is, can be applied for different applications in mathematics, neuroscience, and computer vision tasks. And, uh, but uh, what is the main uh, differences between the um, chaotic, uh, chaotic sequences and random process? Uh, for example, uh, if you consider a um, simple map, like a logistic map, as you can see here, and we generated the uh, uh, time series based on this uh, map, uh, in the time series, we couldn't uh, see any main differences between the random and in the time domain. We couldn't obtain uh, uh, significant differences between the random and chaos and or chaotic system. But when we uh, embed this system, this signal to the state space like this, as you can see here, for chaotic um, sequences or chaotic system, we obtain a deterministic and a simple model, uh, and it can be applied for modeling or something like that. But uh, based on the random process, the fuzzy space uh, is like this, and. Uh, we don't have any deterministic model to represent the system. And so um, in my PhD thesis, uh, um, my main idea was that to handle some uncertainty of the um, um, appearance of the sense or uh, object, or and also uh, 
object movement based on the chaos because based on the uh, usually we use a stochastic based method but uh, or deterministic method but uh, if we wanted to uh, find a good model uh, to have uh, advantages of determinism and, and a stochastic based model we have to use KL theory and uh, in the state space to measure uh, and uh, to apply some geometric measurement to represent the system. And uh, for example, for estimation or modeling, uh, we need to use some measurement like entropy and fractal. And, and um, because uh, based on the fractal, we can have a high level of organization and also we can represent shape irregularities and morphological changes and also uh, the main uh, characteristic of fractal is that uh, it's a uh, scale invariant, uh, invariant, and also um, we can obtain non-integer uh, dimension for system. And uh, so, um, first of all, uh, I focus on the computer vision task, like a visual object tracking. Um, for visual object tracking, we usually use semi-supervised learning uh, to track an object over successive frame. And I use uh, and I improve online multiple instance learning based on the uh, chaotic maps and um, based on the chaos theory. And also, we embed each uh, instance for training into the state space reconstruction uh, and in the state space. And based on this state space, uh, we consider some weight for each instance based on the uh, uh, Euclidean distance and also fractal dimension and improve the online multiple instance learning. But the main um, disadvantage of these algorithms are that we couldn't uh, track a small target because we couldn't obtain a good uh, state space for a small target. And so um, Martin, to solve question? this problem, yeah, yeah. Um, so I know a little bit about dynamic systems and I know a little bit about computer vision. Um, however, uh, yeah. I don't, I don't understand uh, how you find the, you know, how you form the connection between the two. Can you go a little slow over that part, please? So uh, a dynamical system has some, you know, state variables that evolve over time. And you're basically, yeah. to, uh, you know, yeah. model that using differential equations or, you know, finite difference equations, whatever. Yeah. And in computer vision, you know, we use usually deep learning, machine learning algorithms to, let's say, track objects. Yeah. So what yeah. tracking um, corresponds to what in, uh, you know, dynamical systems domain? So the, I, I, I didn't quite get that. Okay. Um, for example, uh, first of all, let me explain about the appearance model. Uh, we uh, improve the appearance model. We usually use har um, wavelets or hard like features, uh, but uh, um, for this um, algorithm, we consider the image into um, and convert the image into time series uh, for each pixel, and then embed into the um, into the state space. And but for uh, tracking, um, as you can see here, for uh, each some each target, uh, we consider a central location of the target, and we wanted to track the center um, or the position of the target over successive frame. Uh, and um, as you know, um, for each movement, for each target, we have a dynamical system, we have a dynamic movement, and we wanted to model this dynamic based on the chaos. And uh, But uh, in this area, we just improved the likelihood function based on the chaotic maps and chaotic um, optimization algorithm to, in, to have an uh, accurate and fast learning. But in this area, in the motion estimation, we focus on the dynamical information of the motion. And as you can see here, for, for example, for um, particle filter or karma filter, just consider the last frame, for example, this frame T minus one, and to track an object. Okay.
Marjan, we lost sound again. Mm -hmm. Another important thing is that we use um, chaotic uh, approach, we use chaos theory, uh, is that uh, it is multi-step ahead prediction. If we want, if we could model uh, the dynamical system, we can predict our time. And so uh, I use this uh, characteristic of the chaotic dynamics for tracking here. And I apply for different uh, data sets. And based on these algorithms, uh, I, um, I could uh, handle some uh, occlusion, fast motion, and out of view for each frame. And uh, another uh, application for chaos is that for the first time, I focus on the sport sampling. And uh, I, my main idea was that to extract dynamical information of the time series or system um, to reduce the dimension. And so uh, we need to extract significant information of the time series without, uh, losing, signif without losing significant information. And we wanted to reduce uh, and uh, to ignore some samples. And so um, in this uh, method, I use comparative sensing algorithm based on the fractal prediction uh, for each window. This can be applied for image and also for time series analysis and for noise reduction and texture synthesis or different application in computer vision tasks. Uh, and um, based on the fractal, we wanted to select significant sample in each time series and then we can apply different modeling uh, and um, can be applied for prediction or something like that. And uh, I wanted to focus on the medical image analysis. I work with CCIPD group uh, and, um, and also with Cleveland Clinic and we receive some CT and MRI and CMR data. And um, the main goal was that to use and develop new machine learning algorithm for medical imaging and medical image analysis uh, to find the, uh, and to represent complex uh, relationship of data. And uh, as you can see, this is can be applied for detection, and classification, and prediction uh, of some disease. And uh, I worked on the different application and with different data, with different groups, uh, and work on the lung cancer, COVID-19, heart disease, and prostate cancer. And uh, we wanted to uh, propose some machine learning algorithm uh, for prediction or detection or something like that. And um, I didn't know, um, first, uh, for first step, we uh, have to uh, collect my data and uh, for example, some noise reduction, normalization, or something like that. And after that, the significant part is segmentation. Um, for CT and MRI scan, it's so really important to use a good segmentation uh, to um, extract uh, ROI and then extract some radiomic feature. This radiomic feature can be presented in 2D and 3D uh, based on the shape or texture-based features. And also, we can improve uh, and obtain a robust features based on the Atlas generation and or affine registration. And then we can apply different classification prediction. And also, we can have some statistical analysis for each application. And first of all, I started to work on the and the uh, images of the lung to predict response to immunotherapy. And uh, we wanted, we proposed 2D fractal features of nodular vasculature uh, to um, predict response or non-response uh, in the patient. And, um, and we presented them to the conferences. And then, um, but my main project in the CCIPD group was a cardiac imaging project. 
And I work on the atrial fibrillation. As you know, atrial fibrillation is a common arrhythmia and heart disease. Um, and we can use catheter ablation to treat AFib. But uh, uh, the problem is that uh, uh, is AFib recurrence because uh, AFib recurrence uh, can be occurred after three months to one year. And uh, to predict AFib recurrence after catheter ablation, we can focus on different parts of the heart. Uh, and in this project, we just focus on the left atrium and morphological changes of left atrium and CT scan in 3D. And uh, as I mentioned before, we need to use some segmentation and in this, um, for this data set, uh, we received CT scan and extracted um, some uh, labels and annotations for CTs based on the region growing or, or, and some manual uh, uh, improvement based on the radiologist in the Cleveland Clinic. Uh, and we extracted lumen model. This is just left atrium. And this is left atrium plus pulmonary veins, as you can see here, like a vessels. And uh, this is the wall of the left atrium. Uh, so we wanted to extract it to um, extract it some 3D and 2D uh, fractal features and chaos space features to represent texture and shape, uh, shape variation and uh, texture changes or uh, CT. And uh, um, this is the uh, framework of the algorithm. And then uh, we use, uh, I extracted uh, 26 um, different fractal and chaos based features, and then uh, apply feature selection and uh, train uh, the model with uh, 135 patients and uh, validate the uh, result uh, on the independent data set with 66. Patient and we presented uh, this work in the AHA conference. Uh, and for 3D shape based feature, we, mm, as you can see here, for fractal, we can describe non integer dimension. And so it's a, a non Euclidean structure and can represent this. And uh, also, um, we can uh, quantify inter and intra variation of the shapes our cities. Uh, and uh, in this paper, we use uh, 3D dimensional fast Fourier transform uh, and then apply Brownian motion to extract uh, fractal dimension, um, as you can see here. This is shape-based feature that extracted from the binary mask of the PV or uh, PV model and lumen model, just uh, based on the left atrium. Uh, and uh, also, uh, we can extract a 3D texture based feature. This is extracted from uh, CT or MRI scan, not uh, on the binary mass. And so uh, we can generate fractal dimension pixel by pixel. And uh, we use box counting for this algorithm, and we can consider some uh, neighborhood for each pixel based on our application. We have to uh, set the parameter for this uh, window. And then uh, we can extract that uh, fractal feature for each ROI, like he, this. This is fractal dimension for each pixel of the CTS scan. And, and, and generally, texture analysis in 2D or 3D can be applied for different applications in the medical imaging, like lung, liver, uh, and uh, breast and blood, or for tumor tissue. Um, and so in this paper, I uh, try to extract texture uh, features from the myocardium wall of the left atrium. As you can see here, this is 3D map of the uh, this fractal uh, for an AFib um, patient with AFib recurrence and non AFib recurrence. And then uh, we uh, add some statistical analysis uh, and 
um, compared fractal dimension and clinical characteristic to obtain a uh, correlation between them. And uh, we accepted this uh, in the circulation journal. And also um, to um, improve this project, uh, we can extract it from different parts of the heart, like uh, right ventricular, left ventricular, something like that, and then extracted this feature. And also to have a robust uh, features, we can extract atlas, um, we can use atlas generation to, ex to have a robust uh, feature from two different categories, for, for example, for AFib minus and AFib plus. If we can find the uh, significant part to represent the differences between AFib plus and AFib minus. And uh, another project um, I worked on the lung cancer uh, and um, you know, for uh, lung cancer, uh, and, and um, we wanted to use deep learning and machine learning algorithm for segmentation of the different part of the lung and uh, ground glass opacity lungs and different part. And also uh, we wanted to um, extract some texture and shape based feature. Uh, and we consider a non-small cell uh, lung, cancer, lung cancer or lung carcinoma. Um, as you know, uh, lung cancer has a high uh, mortality rate. And so to control diseases, we can use X-ray and CT scan to, um, for uh, early stage detection. And, and we use uh, online data for the first step, uh, just to consider uh, pleural effusion. And also we consider the erotic uh, KVT segmentation. And uh, after that, we extracted some fractal features and uh, represent the um, fractal feature and train the model with these features. And uh, we uh, could obtain a good result uh, to um, detect uh, lung cancer in the early stage. Uh, and uh, this is, um, we are working on this project to complete this. And also, um, I worked uh, with China and uh, Turkish team um, to work on the COVID-19. And uh, in this um, project, uh, we uh, focus on the lungs and peripheral effusion and also combination model of them to purpose multi-fractal analysis for the COVID-19 detection. And, and this is peripheral and this is lungs. And we extracted some um, fractal features and obtained a good result. And we submitted it for a RSNA uh, in 2021. And um, and also I started to work um, with uh, Dr. Chick Demer, uh, and um, our proposal was accepted in Tabitech and MSRT. Uh, and um, we wanted in the future we want to focus on the in this project focus on the semantic segmentation, and also um, for application we consider heart disease. In this work project, first of all, uh, I wanted to focus on the 2D and 3D segmentation based on the region growing and improve the region growing algorithm or traditional algorithm be, uh, based on the fractal dimension extracted from each city. And then uh, I wanted to improve this uh, method based on the Poincaré maps because uh, usually we can use Poincaré map for segmentation uh, it's used for um, uh, um, for image processing application, and we can apply this for medical image analysis also, and improve this based on for 3D. And uh, also, we wanted to um, collaborate with Doctor uh, Chigdem to um, propose a new algorithm for. Uh, semantic segmentation and use the fractal maps uh, to understand the uh, nonlinear dynamics and represent a complex pattern. 
uh, and improve the fully uh, FCNs. Uh, and um, generally for heart disease, uh, we can use manual segmentation or something like that. Uh, and um, but uh, uh, for this project, because it's so real, it's really time consuming and it's really hard to separate some part of the heart uh, on the CT um, based on the radiologist. Uh, we wanted to focus uh, on the online data and that labeled uh, and we can use them. But uh, for the next step, uh, I'm working with a radiologist in Estonian University. And also I think uh, we can collaborate with the uh, radiology department in the Cochrane University to um, extend our data set for this project. And to extract it, some part of the heart, like left atrium, and pulmonary veins or something like that, but it's really uh, hard and uh, there are so many challenges in this area. And uh, after that, um, we can, based on the annotation, we can propose some new algorithm uh, for heart segmentation or left atrium segmentation, and then apply this for atrial fibrillation prediction, like my previous work. Uh, so, um, for uh, this uh, project, um, there are different algorithms like a model based method, like active contour and region growing, and uh, atlas based method can be applied for segmentation of um, for cardiac image segmentation. But there are some, um, some problem for registration and uh, find a good uh, manifold and spin the manifold or something like that. So. Um, our idea is that to use deep learning algorithm to discover rich information of the city to uh, represent the, um, and to obtain a good segmentation. And uh, as you can see here, uh, this is C uh, CT scan of the heart, and this is left atrium. We wanted to extract this part. And uh, if we use fractal and dimension of each pixel, we obtain this picture. And as you can see here, we can uh, see all edges and we can improve the uh, ed edge. And so uh, we can uh, separate the left atrium from different parts uh, and apply our deep learning algorithm to improve the segmentation or, or method. And so uh, I think um, based on my previous research on the cardiac imaging, um, I can uh, collaborate with Dr. Chiktem to uh, um, complete this project, complete the first project, first step, because uh, we just focused on region growing before, but now we can focus on the deep learning algorithm for segmentation. And uh, so um, thank you so much for your time. If you have any question. Thank you, Marjan. Um, yeah. any questions? Uh, I have one question, actually. Go ahead. Okay, yeah. Okay, uh, yeah. okay so um, you mentioned that you are using the uh, fractal uh, to process the features better, right? Or, I mean, you are extracting this B picture, right? Uh, with, the, yes. uh, with an exact uh, process. So uh, I missed that uh, when you are using the uh, deep learning uh, approaches, are you are doing this again or not? Uh, I, I missed that part. Um, uh, for this part, um, we can use CT information of the city and uh, accelerate information based on the 3D fractal map to improve the uh, deep learning model with uh, more information of the edges and or, and texture and, and the different pattern in the city. Um, uh, so did you try uh, without using these um, fractal things you have? Uh, this is uh, this is uh, the um, deep, deep, uh, this deep learning is model of the Dr. Chikdam, and uh, we wanted to apply uh, this for uh, you know, first of all apply for um, 
cardiac immunity segmentation or left atrium segmentation, and then uh, compared you know, this model with the uh, applying with fractal maps. Yeah, this is our, uh, one of the significant steps in our project. Yeah. Um, I have a related question, Marjan. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so the, your research in, is, uh, as the title suggests, developing new machine learning algorithms for um, yeah. these types of image problems. Now, um, I have you did you present any sort of comparison between your methods, which make use of uh, you know dynamic system methods, uh, with you know the standard state of the art methods in the literature on any common data sets? And did you you know? Um, did you show any advantages to your uh, methods? If you did in the presentation, I missed that part. Yeah, I didn't bring, uh, just um, for this project, I just uh, apply a region growing based on the 3D, um, 3D so for this map. But for this project, uh, I just um, have some preliminary results. Yeah, we obtained a better result for uh, segmentation based on 3D map, uh, but for another uh, for another project, we um, usually use uh, region growing and traditional method. We didn't use any deep learning, but uh, based on the region growing, yeah, fractal really helpful to uh, obtain a good uh, target region. Okay, and have you applied your methods to any sort of standard uh, computer vision data sets and sort of demo to demonstrate their... Uh, yeah, yeah. If we, if we purpose 2D segmentation, we can apply this for different application of the computer vision task in 2D. Yeah. yeah. Well, did you or can you? Uh, I just uh, try. Yeah, I did it, but uh, my result not completed. Uh, I prepare my paper, and we wanted to send it with Dr. Chitam in 2D, but it's not. Uh, I have to work on the visualization or something like that. But the result, uh, yeah, it's good. Okay, so what would be nice to see is a side by side comparison on a standard data set that everybody uses. Yeah. And you know, here is the state of the yeah, art yeah. method. Here's my contribution, and my contribution has a statistically significant advantage over the state of the art method. So yeah. you, you yeah. haven't shown anything like that. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay. Uh, Marshan, how are you yeah. planning to use point core maps? You mentioned point core maps in one of your slides. Yeah, yeah. I'm wondering how you use that. For Poincaré maps, uh, we can apply this Poincaré map for deep learning, and uh, there is a one paper in this area. But uh, my main idea is that uh, when we extracted some, uh, for example, when we, we use uh, some um, seed or seed points in in image, for example, for left atrium, we can consider this seed, and then uh, for each slice, we obtain a set of part, a set of seed. And to find a relationship between this seed and to find the dynamic of changes of uh, the position of this seed, we can find the chaotic map based on the Poincaré maps. So what will Poincaré maps will give you? Can you tell me what, what? Poincaré maps will give you? Uh, Poincaré maps uh, just um, used to estimate a map, okay? Just uh, estimate to uh, chaotic map for dynamical system. If we consider some seed for each slice in the CT scan, uh, so uh, we can uh, generate and estimate a map between these as a chaotic system. And so uh, we can represent the variation of the seed in each slice based on the chaotic map. And we can estimate uh, this map based on the Poincaré map. Is, Poincaré map is really better than use, for example, um, piecewise uh, chaotic map or something like that for estimation uh, because it's a really general and uh, we can obtain a good result to use point current map instead of, for example, piecewise uh, chaotic or um, couple chaotic maps or something like that. 
What, what's the difference between chaotic map and the Poincaré map? A uh, Poincaré chaotic map is just a map, like a logistic map, like this. It's very really simple, or the, like, uh, for example, you know, uh, the uh, Lorentz attractor, as you, can, as you know, but for Poincaré math, we, is, we don't have any math and we don't have any uh, deterministic map for complex system. And to obtain this map, it would better to use uh, Poincaré map to have a general, uh, to obtain a general view of the chaotic system. How do you construct that? What? I could how, how do you construct the Poincaré map? Uh, we, we just consider a different seat or different um, samples uh, in uh, over the time and then uh, estimate and then map them to a plate and then generate a map for the this variation the, there are uh, some different uh, method to estimate the Poincaré maps in this area uh. I think I'm trying to understand like how you use it because it's used for periodic systems and uh, and uh, and I'm trying to understand like how you determine the periodicity of the system to construct your map. Mm -hmm. It is used for a periodic system, right? Um, for example, uh, if we work on the narrow, for example, in the different field, for example, neuroscience. Uh, we can uh, use a, a, chaotic, a special chaotic map, like a logistic or Lorentz, to model some dynamics of the neurons or something like that. But the main idea and uh, main question is that if you could uh, find a good map between a dynamic of the, for example, of the neurons and a logistic map, uh, what should I do? And uh, for to solve this problem, we have to use a general approach to estimate a chaotic map based on the uh, dynamical system, based on the sum samples of the system. And so we need to use the Poincaré map. So in one of your slides, you mentioned about Leopono exponents, I guess. Uh, well, it was yeah. maybe the third slide or fourth slide. So how do you calculate those? Yeah, here, like you mentioned, like Leopono exponent of yeah. 0.1251. Um, so how do you calculate that? And um, when we um, when we have a chaotic dynamics, for example, when com embed the system into the state space, to model and to describe this system, we have some measurement like entropy and fractal and also Lyapunov. If uh, we obtain positive Lyapunov exponent, uh, it obtain it is chaotic system. Uh, it's not uh, necessary. It's a necessary condition to represent that. And so, uh, in this um, in this project, we use Lyapunov and fractal and a different uh, measurement to apply for a weight because for each instance we consider a weight for learning and so we use this measurement for learning. But uh, Leopono, you must be calculating Leopono exponent somehow, right? Aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Leopono exponent, yeah. How Leopono do you calculate that? Uh, this different uh, method, uh, we just use a toolbox to extract the Leopon exponent for the, this state space. You know the relation between Leopon exponents and uh, Poincaré maps? Uh, uh, Leopon exponent and Poincaré map. Leopon yeah. exponent is a measurement, okay? If we have a chaotic system, for example, uh, you um, uh, say, no, it's not chaotic system. If um, we have some condition to have a chaotic system. If we have a chaotic system, we have to um, uh, obtain a, a non-integer fractal dimension and positive Lyapunov exponent, exponent. If we obtain a positive Lyapunov exponent, exponent and 
uh, non integer fractal dimension it represents that this system is chaotic system it's your eigenvalues right it is it is your eigenvalues of two matrix yeah, yeah. Uh, that is mapping x n plus one to the x n right yeah 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 okay thank you I have a similar question to Tata um, Okay, here you I couldn't exactly get the idea of using a uh, chaos theory. I mean, where exactly mm -hmm. you use the chaos theory? As I know, a chaos theory or chaotic maps uh, produce uh, random numbers between zero and one in a uniformly manner. Um, yeah. Actually, I have experience in using chaotic maps for improving the diversification of uh, meta heuristic algorithms. Uh, yeah. I wonder uh, um, for uh, what purpose you use it? Do you use it for um, yeah. producing a random numbers yes. uniformly? Yes, yeah. And yeah. um, I, um, I have some um, publication in the optimization and apply this for meta heuristic algorithm to improve uh, uh, imperialist competitive algorithm for optimization. And also I use the chaotic maps and chaotic optimization for multi-object uh, function and also uh, apply for uh, different application in the discrete and continuous uh, problem. Uh, yeah, um, when we wanted to generate the random sequences, as you can see here, we uh, we obtain uh, iterative samples so the significant uh, inf significant uh, differences between the chaos and random process for optimization is that if you wanted to reduce the uh, computational cost uh, you uh, don't have generate uh, uh, iterative samples because you computed the um, evaluation function for each sample. And to reduce the disk uh, computation costs, it would be better to use uh, random like sequences generated by chaotic maps uh, to um, have a fast and accurate. Yeah, yeah. I know oh. about meta heuristic algorithms improvement yeah. by chaotic theory, but my yeah. question is that what is the output of chaotic theory or chaotic map in your project? Is it a, a uh, in, random number or? Okay, and, and there are some um, different approach for chaos theory. Uh, if we want to use uh, chaotic optimization, I just use uh, chaotic optimization for this project. And I change the likelihood function to optimize this and change it to a chaotic mass. Yeah, uh, we could obtain a fast, uh, online algorithm and online systems provides learning for tracking based on the chaotic maps. And, uh, but uh, for example, in this project, uh, I didn't use any optimization or something like that. I just use PSOD or big data simulation. It's a um, method to embed a system to a chaotic system. And uh, it's different. It's not, we don't need to use any optimization approach or something like that. Okay, I still I couldn't get my answer. What is the output of your chaotic using? If we use chaotic, as I mentioned here, we could um, because we just uh, we remove iterative sample. We just improve the speed of the algorithm. Just this. Okay. Thank you. And maybe we could um, handle a local optimal or something like that. Again, it's a random number, right? Yeah, this, uh, this is uh, from the random number. This is from the chaotic map. Yeah. Yeah, the output of chaotic map uh, is a random number, but it, uh, it is produced in a uniformly manner as I know. Yeah, if we wanted to, for optimization, yeah, we can, uh, for example, generate a random number and then apply 
uh, for example, logistic map or another chaotic map to Thanks update so the sample for optimization. Yeah. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? All right, well, um, we thank our speaker uh, for the talk today and uh, for uh, faculty members, there will be a face-to-face -face section uh, tomorrow. Neslihan has sent a uh, message. So anybody interested in uh, talking to Marjan will have a, will get a chance tomorrow among the faculty members. Thank you, everyone. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, Marjan. Thank you. Thank you, have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.